Tonight, Scotland's new MPs head for London. Westminster is awash with newbies being inducted in the new day job. And for Labour, the new governing party, it's a chance to meet colleagues for the first time. There are a new generation of us here. This is the biggest turnover in Members of Parliament in history. And with that, we have a chance to modernise the place. Closer to home, we look at the relationship between the two governments. Can politicians at Holyrood and Westminster work in harmony? Milk, toast, people kind of stick together a little bit and, you know, probably no change will happen, but there you go. I don't know, if they had enough pints in the pub together, everything would be fine, probably. In golf, Ewan Ferguson fights back tears after winning the International Open in Munich. And the choir bringing people with dementia closer together. I'm Kellyanne Woodland in Edinburgh. And I'm John Mackay in Glasgow. This is the STV News at six. Good evening. Hundreds of new MPs are descending on Westminster. It's induction day and like any other new job, they'll be getting briefings on their new role and finding their way around the Commons. It's been just over 72 hours since Keir Starmer walked through the doors of number 10, but already the new look House of Commons is clear. And with a vastly changed political landscape, one of the first tasks will be finding out where everyone will sit. Our Westminster correspondent Paris Gurtsianis has been meeting some of the newbies. By air and by rail, Scotland's new Labour MPs arrived at Westminster. Not in a single wave, but a steady stream, ready to join the red political tide that swept over Britain last week. Labour says it isn't wasting any time to use its huge new majority to deliver change. But today, the new Chancellor warned of the challenge ahead. I have repeatedly warned that whoever won the general election would inherit the worst set of circumstances since the Second World War. What I have seen in the past 72 hours has only confirmed that. Our economy has been held back by decisions deferred and decisions ducked. Not no money left, but there isn't much. Scotland's new Labour MPs say they're impatient to deliver. I think the whole experience is just incredibly humbling and I think for not just for myself but a lot of Scottish Labour MP colleagues now it's that opportunity to actually serve our constituents and get stuff done from government. We've spent such a long time in the political wilderness that actually having that opportunity now is just such an immense privilege. People have voted for us because they want things to change, that's what we said we'd do, that's what we're going to do. I've got a hanger with Cowden Beath and Kirkcaldy on it, it's got a pink ribbon on it which is apparently for my sword <laughs> which I have left behind in Kirkcaldy. Um, is not with me today. So that says something about the customs of the place. The other thing I think, look, there are a new generation of us here. This is the biggest turnover in Members of Parliament in history. And with that, we have a chance to modernise the place. And it isn't just Labour sending new faces to Westminster from Scotland. I think we're all here, we've all been elected, we've all been listening to constituents, and it's really important that we just step up and deliver for the people that have voted for us and given us the honour of being here. Meanwhile, in Downing Street, another democratic tradition, the moving van, emptying out the prime ministerial flat. Politics is a brutal business. Well, Paris joins us now from Westminster. And Paris, tell us, what's it been like for the new MPs arriving at Parliament today? Well, Kellyanne, it is a bit like a first day of school mix the first day of a new job. Everyone arriving to take up their seats is paired with a buddy, an existing MP, who shows them around the building. They meet HR, they meet IT, get their new laptop or Good iPad. Morning, and uh, they're also given a little booklet with all the faces of all the other new MPs as well. And remember, so many of these new MPs are from Labour, and you've seen so many Labour MPs wearing red wandering around in a bit of a daze. They insist that there wasn't any memo that went around about how they should dress. There are so many new Labour MPs that many are going to end up sitting on the opposition benches as well as on the government benches. Now that's the fun bit, that the slightly grimmer news is that they also get a security briefing and in an atrium where normally MPs have their 
their lunch, that a door has been built illustrating all the locks and alarms that they might want to have fitted to the doors of their homes and constituency offices. This really has a, a, been a big day, a big change in their lives. And Paris, what does the first week in Parliament look like? When do they actually get down to business? Well, parliamentary officially, a parliament officially begins its work tomorrow with the election of a new speaker and then MPs start to be sworn in. That takes a, a, a full week. But the politics does get going, certainly for the Conservative Party. They've got to elect a new leader. In fact, they need to elect a new chairman of the 1922 committee that will run that leadership election because, of course, that person lost their seat in the election. The government wants to show that they're getting down to business. That's what we've heard from Rachel Reeves today. She's ripped up a a lot of uh, regulations to try and get business uh, investing and the economy growing. She said that even though the budget won't be until the fall, she'll give an assessment of just how bad the public finances are before the holiday. All right, Paris, thanks very much for that. Well, the new Prime Minister and First Minister have vowed to work constructively together and make delivering for Scotland the number one priority after their first official meeting in Edinburgh. John Swinney admitted his party had some soul-searching to do after losing 39 seats. But one of those former MPs says it's important to avoid a blame game. There's flashing photography in this report from our political reporter, Laura Alderman. With the Scottish Parliament in recess, the only people here are Edinburgh's tourists. But when MSPs return to Holyrood, the relationship between this government and Downing Street will be crucial. <laughs> Resetting and repairing that bond was the aim of the new Prime Minister, Sir Keir Starmer, as he arrived in Edinburgh last night. He met with First Minister John Swinney to discuss their shared priorities, but on Indyref 2, they remain divided. Well, there are clearly differences of opinion between us on some of the constitutional issues. But the point of this meeting was to reset the relationship in a respectful way, in a constructive way. We have different views on the Constitution, and I set out the fact that we take a different view in Scotland, and that I believe in independence. But I also made clear, as I did on Friday, that the Scottish National Party has to take time to reflect and consider the issues that the election presents to us. But how important is the constitutional question now? Support for independence remains high at around 48%. But after suffering a crushing defeat at last week's general election, the SNP has nine MPs left and it lost almost all of its seats in the central belt to Labour, including this one, Edinburgh North and Leith. Do you think the SNP should keep independence on the table? Is it important to you? Um, if you'd asked me this question three years ago, I would have said yes. I have since changed my mind. Do you think that John Swinney and Keir Starmer can get along better, have a good relationship? I don't know. If they had enough pints in the pub together, everything would be fine, probably. That's the solution. <laughs> yeah. They're both kind of bland, but, like, you know, they're, like, these sort of milk toast people kind of stick together a little bit. I think if Keir Starmer can make a difference, then he might even swing Marvel. I could be a swinger. <laughs> <laughs> so today's the first day of the rest of my life. For those who lost their seats, it's a time for reflection on what went wrong and what now. I don't think it's any one thing and I don't think we should be blaming anyone individually either. I think it's really important that we reflect. I think there was a, a powerful movement to get rid of the Conservatives and lots of people believed that voting Labour was the only way to do that. I do understand that, but I think folk have to remember that only twice since the Second World War has the result in Scotland made a difference. While many in the SNP are preparing for a future away from Parliament, one has returned as an MP after five years on the sidelines. As much as I'll miss my colleagues, you know, you deal with the Parliament as it is. The job that we've got to do has not changed from last week. It's a different Parliament, a different set of dynamics, but we still have to hit the ground running and be that strong voice for our communities that we represent, the people who sent us here, but also for everybody in Scotland as well. A lot now rests on the relationship between Scotland's two governments and who gets the blame for any problems or the credit for successes. Laura Alderman, STV News, Edinburgh. To other stories, and the chair of the Scottish Child Abuse Inquiry has appealed for help in investigating two residential schools for deaf children. 
Lady Smith said she wants to hear from residents who attended either Donaldson School for Deaf Children in Edinburgh or St Vincent's School for the Deaf and Blind in Glasgow any time up to the end of 2014. Long-term prisoners in Scotland could be released after serving two-thirds of their sentence. Inmates would be released under licence conditions and supervision. The proposals were announced in a Scottish Government consultation as it attempts to tackle the country's bulging prison population. A 27-year-old man has died after his car crashed off the M9 motorway after a police pursuit. The car was travelling south between junctions 8 and 9 when the incident happened around midday yesterday. Police say the car had been involved and followed by officers beforehand in the Stirling area. Officers said the circumstances surrounding the collision have been referred to the force watchdog. Concerns have been raised over patient safety at one of Scotland's largest hospitals. Healthcare Improvement Scotland conducted an unannounced inspection of Glasgow Royal Infirmary's emergency departments in April. Its findings on that occasion then led to a second inspection in June. No details were given on the nature of the concerns, but a spokesperson for NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde said action had been taken to improve conditions. A man who threw a packet of crisps at a sheriff has been jailed for 16 months. Stephen Bockley hurled the rapper at Sheriff Barry Divers from the dock at Glasgow Sheriff Court last November. The 45-year-old was reacting to being sentenced for spitting on a court employee. And trains between Edinburgh and Glasgow were cancelled today due to a shortage of staff. Scott Rail says the disruption is due to fewer than normal train drivers taking on overtime as a pay dispute with the union ASLEF continues. Families in Lanarkshire who have loved ones with advanced dementia say they have been left fumbling in the dark and fighting for answers about what will happen when three specialist units in Bells Hill close in the coming months. HC1's Milnwood, Moss End and Orbiston units at Hatton Lee Care Home are the only sites in the area that look after residents with complex dementia needs. Alzheimer's Scotland has told STV News our entire system is in dire need of reform. Caitlin Hutchinson reports. The people here all have loved ones with advanced dementia. Their complex needs are currently being catered for at Lanarkshire's only specialist units. But in March, they were told all residents would have to be moved on from the facilities at Hatton Lee within six months after care provider HC1 ended its contract with the health board. People need preparation for these things emotionally. Yeah, they have to be prepared and financially and we're fumbling in the dark. We should have been informed over a period of a year, slowly. Unable to find alternative premises, NHS Lanarkshire is now preparing a unit at Udston Hospital in Hamilton. But families are worried it will be rushed and unfit for purpose. And for Brian, the prospect of another hospital setting is bringing back unwanted memories of his wife's time at Monklands. I virtually didn't recognise my wife because she was absolutely doped up to the hill. I was told that I could visit um, for a half hour period once every three days and I felt as if you know that the, the environment was was basically just controlling the, the, the patients as opposed to helping the patients. We have had to fight for every single bit of information. We've had nothing whatsoever in writing to explain you know the, 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 the setup of the, the unit. NHS Lanarkshire says families will be invited to visit the new specialist base at Udston this month if the multidisciplinary teams assessing patients deem that to be the right move for them. But some are being told their relatives no longer require that level of clinical care. The problem that I've got is that they say that my husband can go into mainstream care. You still need to find a care home who will be able to look after him and there's not that many out there that would be willing to take someone with his background. People in Nelson will be reassessed every three months, but it could be less than that. And then they could be moved on again. It's going to be a vicious circle. Alzheimer's Scotland says this situation is simply symptomatic of a national problem. We need to transform our specialist dementia uh, care units. We have to have well-designed, properly staffed, skilled therapeutic environments to care for people with some of the most complex needs and we need to have an assessment process that is much broader than that narrow question about whether your needs can be met in a hospital environment or elsewhere. 
The Scottish government says it's committed to supporting those living with dementia. These families have been reassured the facilities at Hattonley will not close until every resident has somewhere to go. But they say their list of frustrations and unanswered questions continues to grow. Dementia care is overlooked and the people with it are not being looked after properly. It's almost as if they're put on a shelf and forgotten about. They're just vulnerable individuals who need robust public care. Caitlin Hutchison, STV News. And well done to him. Now, former Celtic defender Charlie Mulgrew says it's important his ex-club keep their top players and add experience to their squad. The champions are targeting their fourth league title in a row and Mulgrew believes the team will be even stronger this season. He's won the Premiership trophy five times at Celtic. Now Charlie Mulgrew is eagerly anticipating the new season as his former club prepared to begin the defence of their title. While Brendan Rodgers will add to his squad, Celtic may have to fend off interest for top players like Matt O'Reilly. The most important thing is they try and hold on to the players they've got. You imagine Carter Vickers, you want to hold on to him, you want to hold on to Matt O'Reilly. Atati, you want to stay, McGregor, these are Kyogo. So you'd imagine that they want to keep, keep these players first and foremost. You want to probably tidy up the squad in terms of players that are not going in the manager's plans. What kind of player do they need? They've got a Champions League campaign as well. So you imagine they need a bit more experience. Maybe people in their mid-20s that have, that have had a career and that are looking to kick on, that are in their prime. Rodgers has secured the Scottish Cup as well as the league in his second spell at the club. And Mulgrew expects Celtic to kick on under the Northern Irishman. He's won over the fans, which he said he would. I think he was always the best man for the job in terms of what he'd done at the club, how he knew the club, his quality as a manager and what he's done. He's now in his second season. You'd imagine he's more established in terms of with the recruitment team and who he wants to bring in. The players know his style of play and how he works, so you'd imagine he'll be even stronger again. Celtic begin the defence of their title at home to Kilmarnock on August the 4th. Athletic San Laura Muir says she'll head to the Olympic Games with renewed confidence after breaking the British record in the 1500 metres at the Paris Diamond League. Muir clocked 3 minutes 53.79 seconds to finish third in yesterday's race behind Kenya's Faith Kapiegon, who smashed the world record, and Australia's Jess Hull. I've only ever run 54 once, and that was winning silver in Tokyo, so I knew it was going to take something special even to run 354 again, but to run 353, it's like, I, I can't put into words. Quite, quite, uh, yeah, sorry, I'm about it. It means a lot. Yeah. 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 Tennis and Jimmy Murray and Taylor Townsend are through to the second round of the mixed doubles at Wimbledon. The pair defeated Nicholas Barrientos and Mio Cato in straight sets, winning 6-3, 7-6. Murray is looking to add to his two mixed doubles titles. He's won at the All England Club. And that, folks, is all your sport tonight. See you again tomorrow. STV Sport, sponsored by the CR Smith Summer Sale. Well, it's been a lovely day with the weather. Let's see if it's set to continue throughout the week. Here's Sean. A dry start to the day will become increasingly splashy. TUI sponsors STV Weather. Very good evening to you. Well, the talking point for the last several weeks, meteorologically at least, is that the temperatures have been very disappointing for the time of year, and that still continues for the next couple of days. And then we get a nice little bump there. As we head towards the weekend, the temperatures at least get slightly above average, 19 to 21, 22 degrees Celsius, and then we perhaps see a little bit of a dip later on next week. But for the time being, no big spikes in the temperatures expected for the foreseeable, and still no prolonged summery spell, at least until the end of the month. However, every time I look at the models, this just gets moved further and further away from us, tentatively close, but still far enough away, meteorologically speaking. So, we keep our fingers crossed that we will get a more prolonged summary spell later in the month, but for the time being, still remaining changeable. Out there today, well, it's not been too bad. A lot of dry weather tonight with clear spells, quite cool across parts of Stirlingshire and Perthshire, but tomorrow it's going to be dreadful out there, especially during the afternoon. Now, probably the far northwest, around the lights of Arden and Merchan, Mull, Col, Tyree, Lachab, 
Harbour and Fort William. Temperatures 19 to 20 degrees Celsius. Feeling nice in the sunshine here. We'll hang on to the brightest weather. But elsewhere, those temperatures by the end of the afternoon, 11 or 12 degrees. Plenty of rain and a strengthening wind too. On Wednesday, still not looking too great out there. Plenty of rain for many of us. The rain starts to turn more showery as we move into Thursday. Temperatures probably staying around the mid-teens at best. Bye-bye. TUI sponsors STV Weather. And finally, a dementia-friendly choir has recorded a song created especially for them as part of a drive to help bring together those affected by the condition. The song is part of a project by the organisation Luminates, which supports dementia-inclusive choirs and singing groups nationwide. Vanessa Kennedy has more. This music has struck a chord with all of the members of this choir. After weeks of rehearsals, this dementia-friendly group have now recorded this song. And whether they live with the condition or care for someone who does, being part of this choir has made a real difference to all of their lives. My husband was diagnosed in 2018 with dementia. It was looking for something that we can do and go out together. Um, and join something. And he's always loved to sing. I mean, he's always loved to sing. So uh, having found Let's Sing has been great, really. Yes, that's a buzz out of it. Singing makes me happy. While there's research showing the benefit of older people and those living with dementia singing familiar songs, there's growing understanding that learning new songs can also be beneficial. And the singer-songwriter who created the track says it's something he was keen to be involved in. This song's called I Am The Song because I sort of believe that everybody here has got their own story and I, I, wanted, to, I wanted them to be able to sing something that meant something to them. So. What goes on in our brains when we sing uh, is, is really important. It brings joy, it brings connection with people around you. Um, and it can bring memories for people when they are singing music that's familiar, it can bring memories back as well. Now that the song has been recorded, it will be shared online so that even more people affected by dementia in some way can experience these moments of joy. Vanessa Kennedy, STV News East Lothian. Oh, what a really lovely idea to bring those affected together. Well done to all of them. And that's it from us here, from all of us. Thank you for watching and enjoy the rest of your evening. Good night. Thank you.